thought today we'd revisit another one of the tales of famous Americans by Con Connie and Peter Roop. So today we'll share the story of Helen Keller. So she was a social activist who lived from 1880 to 1968. Helen Keller was born on June 27, 1880 in Tuscumba, Alabama. Her parents, Kate and Arthur, were proud of their bright-eyed, curious, and active daughter. When Helen was about six months old, she could say, Hi, Dave, for how do you do? She said, Wawa, for water. And before long, Helen was walking. Well, one day when she was about 19 months old, Helen became very sick. She had a high fever for many days, and suddenly the fever faded, and the Kellers were excited that Helen was well again. But something was wrong. When Mrs. Keller said Helen's name, Helen couldn't hear her. Helen didn't close her eyes anymore when she took Sophie back. Her mother realized that Helen couldn't see either. Helen Keller was deaf and blind. Helen learned to live in her dark, silent world. She used her senses of smell, touch, and taste. She smelled flowers, petted her dog, and tasted cake. Helen shook her head when she meant no, and she nodded her head to say yes, and she pretended to slice bread when she wanted bread, and she shivered when she wanted ice cream. She waved goodbye when people left the house, and she mixed cake batter and fed the family's turkeys. However, Helen felt trapped because she couldn't see or hear, and this made her angry sometimes. She threw terrible temper tantrums when she couldn't have her way. She took food off people's plates. She even hit and pinched. When Helen was about six, the Kellers realized that they had to do something with her, their unhappy daughter. Mr. Keller took Helen to an eye doctor, but he couldn't do anything. Helen visited Dr. Alexander Graham Bell, and Dr. Bell had invented the telephone. He worked with deaf people, but Dr. Bell couldn't do anything either. The Kellers decided to hire a teacher to work with Helen. The teacher had to know about deaf and blind children, be very patient, and live with the Kellers. The Kellers invited Anne Sullivan to teach Helen. Anne lived in Boston, and Anne had been blind, but doctors had helped her to see. On March 3rd, 1887, Anne arrived in Tuscumba, and later Helen wrote, The most important day I remember in all of my life is the day when my teacher, Anne Mansfield Sullivan, came to me. Anne taught Helen a sign alphabet by shaping letters into her hand. Anne spelled D-O-L-L -L into Helen's hand. And when she held her doll, Helen spelled D-O-L-L -L too. But Anne knew that Helen didn't understand that doll meant the doll she held. Sometimes Helen had temper tantrums and she would get tired of Anne trying to teach her. One morning at breakfast, Anne decided to teach Helen to stop taking food off her plate. Helen and Anne battled a long time before Helen ate her own breakfast. Anne patiently tried to teach Helen what words were. Helen still didn't understand. And one day at the water pump, Anne spelled W-A-T-E-R into Helen's hand. Helen held her other hand under the splashing water. All at once, Helen understood that things had names. Helen wrote, I knew then that W-A-T-E-R meant the wonderful, cool something that was flowing over my hand. That living word awakened my soul. It gave it light, hope, joy, and set it free. Helen easily learned thousands of words. The most important word to her was T E A. C-H-E-R. Helen always called Anne teacher. Anne taught Helen how to read the raised letters of the Braille alphabet. 
Before long, Helen was reading books and Anne taught Helen how to write. Helen wrote letters to family, friends, and even Santa Claus. Helen went to school in Boston when she was eight years old with Anne at her side. Helen learned French, German, and Greek. She studied math, science, history, and geography, and she learned how to speak a little bit. Her first words were, it is warm. Helen studied so hard that in 1900, she went to Radcliffe College in Massachusetts. College was difficult because, but, but Helen didn't give up. Anne was with her, helping with classes and keeping her spirits high. Helen did so well that she became the first deaf and blind person to graduate from an American college. Helen wrote a book in 1903 called The Story of My Life. People read about Helen and how she overcame her disability. They read her book, heard her speeches, and wrote her letters. Helen helped other blind people. She wrote newspaper and magazine articles on how to prevent blindness in babies, and she helped older people who were blind too. In 1936, Ann Sullivan died with Helen by her side holding her hand. Helen missed her beloved teacher who had been at her side for almost 50 years. After World War II, Helen comforted soldiers wounded in the war. She encouraged them to live lives filled with hope and helpfulness. Helen called this the crowning experience of my life. Helen Keller became one of the most famous women in America. In 1964, Helen received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 1965, she was elected to the Women's Hall of Fame. On June 1, 1968, Helen died at home. She was 87. Helen Keller lived most of her years in a quiet, dark world, but her spirit and determination brought the light of hope to people around the world. There's her medal. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. She's so inspiring. So I'll see you again soon, friends. Bye-bye.